Elijah, the man of courage and prayer, fled the anger of Queen Jezebel, only later to hear from God while in the depths of depression, crying out his woes to the Lord as he sat under a broom tree in the Negev desert. Nourished by angel food cake and water, Elijah then traveled 40 days south to Mount Horeb at Sinai where he met God in a new and deeper way. In a similar manner, in 1857, 14-year-old A.B. Simpson, after months of fear-filled days, finally came out of his despair regarding his salvation after reading from a book in his pastor's library. He read, The first good work you will ever perform is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Until you do this, all your works, prayers, tears, and resolve are in vain. At once, young Simpson received Jesus Christ and his forgiveness of sin by faith. He threw himself to his knees and prayed, From this moment I am thy child, forgiven and saved, simply because I take thee at thy word. Both Elijah and Simpson met God by faith and obedience after battling fear and depression. Despite more than two years' difference between A.B. and his older brother Howard, there always seemed to be a level of sibling rivalry between them. Though James and Jane Simpson had determined to send firstborn Howard to college to study for the ministry, A.B. pled his case and asked permission to also prepare to be a pastor at his own expense. Taken aback by the unexpected request, the parents recognized the sincerity of their younger son Albert and gave him their blessing. They felt doubly honored by the Lord, even though James would lose a needed helper on the farm. Both boys, needing extra cash for college, took a training course to earn a certificate to teach in the local common school. Albert finished the program and began teaching first. Even though both boys prepared for college entrance exams with their scholarly pastor as their tutor, Bert began college in 1860, a year earlier than Howard. At Knox College in Toronto, he took a hybrid double major in the college's literary course as well as the pastoral training program. Just 17 years old, young Simpson quickly took advantage of the college's cash awards for the best essays on subjects chosen by the faculty. During his four years at Knox, A.B. won at least one award per year, sometimes more. In addition, during his second year, he began weekend student preaching at nearby Presbyterian churches and soon became one of the most sought-after preacher boys, despite his very youthful appearance. These opportunities to preach provided a welcome injection of cash. Driven by the need to pay his way through school and a generous dose of determination, Simpson later admitted to prideful ambition to excel. After four years at Knox, he graduated with high honors. Howard entered Knox one year after A.B., and soon both brothers had their eye on the same girl, namely Margaret Henry, the flashing-eyed brunette daughter of a well-to-do Toronto businessman and head of the house where Bert and Howard rented a room. Once again, ambitious Albert won the prize and he and Margaret were married after his graduation in September 1865. Because of his growing reputation as an outstanding student preacher, A.B. had filled the pulpit of the prestigious Knox Presbyterian Church in Hamilton, Ontario, one of the most important Presbyterian churches in all of Canada. Surprisingly, the church called him as their pastor, just before he and Margaret were married. He accepted the call preached his first sermon on Sunday, was ordained on Monday, and married on Tuesday. Then, he and Margaret took a short honeymoon cruise on the St. Lawrence River. Thus, in one amazing week, 21-year-old Reverend A.B. Simpson was married and embarked on a ministry journey that ended 55 years later. Like Elijah, who suddenly came on the scene in a big way by proclaiming a countrywide fast, A.B. began a local ministry in Hamilton, Ontario that one day would have a global impact.